We need gloves. <laughs> oh, yes. Hello, everyone. This is Ina with Inichka Chef, and welcome to my kitchen. Today, in episode, we are making borscht. It's Ukraine traditional dish. I can't even imagine what more would be traditional than borscht. And I probably should start my blog with this recipe, but um, I put away for a while, and now it's time. And I can't imagine other time to do that since this month is my mom's birthday, and that's, this is her favorite dish. She can live more than three days without, the, without borscht. So we're making today very traditional, the one I grew up in, very classic, with meat, <laughs> very rich, um, delicate flavor and rich broth. It's so good. So after one and a half hour of boiling on very low and slow, our meat, beans, and raw onions, with the, I, which I chopped and add, and skim the fat, it's low and slow, but uh, simmering for one and a half hour. So now is next step, while the meat continue cooking, which is not quite but done, but it's getting close, we need to do zajarka. And I probably mentioned many times through my blog what, the, what is zajarka in a... Ukraine cuisine, it's onion and carrots. Two ingredients with saute, with fat of your choice. I will use olive oil today. Unfortunately, I don't have sunflower oil, so that's what I'm using. So all carrots in. This soup naturally slightly sweet and sour because the beets and carrots, it has so much sweetness, natural during caramelization, during cooking, the all sugar release, no need to add extra sugar. While I was zajarka going on, on medium-low heat, at about one tablespoon of coriander seed, and I always uh, recommend to buy coriander seeds whole. They don't last long if you buy and grind, so never do that. And the same um, with dill seeds. About half tablespoon, very strong. <laughs> I wish you can smell my kitchen. Now it smells like my mom's kitchen. The coriander, when it hits the um, carrots, it's so great combination. They love each other and smell so good. <laughs> I can't wait to try it. So another ingredient is mushroom. And my mom would just chop or add as it is, but I like to grind and make like a powder and just add as a seasoning. Oh yes. Smell, smell like forest, smells so good. Uh, you can use any mushroom, but I recommend to use it with more flavor, like porcini, shiitake, you can use. The more flavor is better, not the mild one. <laughs> and we need like about one tablespoon. I'm using um, yellow, you, you can, potato, Russell potato would work, but please do not use red potato, waxy one. <laughs> The broth will be clear and uh, just not have enough starch to, to accomplish right consistency. <laughs> this dish, such a rustic, it's hard to measure for me. I never measure. That thing, I think this first time for the blog, I measure ingredients. <laughs> Wash is bubbling away. Our bag. After potato, I like to add our zajarka. Mm -hmm. 
and continue cooking. <laughs> now we're doing prep for the beets. For my favorite vegetable beet, we need gloves. <laughs> we absolutely need it. We're not using stems, only the root vegetable, which is I know some people do in uh, some parts of Ukraine. Uh, people do, but not, in my family we never did, so we're not doing this. <laughs> Peel. Look how beautiful and gorgeous column. And the same thing, little bit of olive oil or sunflower oil, whichever you prefer, and add your beets. And I relate on natural sugar. I'm not adding extra. Only salt and pepper. Also to save and to not lose any color in, of beets, we need to add just about one tablespoon of white vinegar. And a pinch of cayenne pepper. Just a pinch. And chop the cabbage. It's a small cabbage, I'll probably will use all, but up to you. You can use half, you can use as much as you want. This recipe, it's... <laughs> you can change so many ways and you can change your proportion of ingredients. And the last ingredients we need to prep, it's dill and parsley. My grandmother used to add so much greens. <laughs> Her red borscht would be green. And on very end, I like to add garlic. On very, very end, my sister doesn't add garlic at all, but they like to eat with raw garlic borscht. I don't think, I can see my husband would do that. <laughs> or me, I can eat raw garlic. <laughs> unless it's fermented. <laughs> about, about four or five cloves. And I like to, at this point, to discard bones. I think they did a good job give a nice flavor. The more variety of meats, the more flavor, of course. Oh, look how pretty. So the meat and garlic in. Back to the broth. Along with herbs. And now, time to taste for the seasoning. So good. Maybe need a tiny bit of more salt. If you like zippy, you can add more cayenne pepper, but I leave as it is. My husband is not a big fan of spicy food. And let, let cover and turn off the heat and let cover and let sit for at least one hour to all flavor comes together. And as always, on the end, the best part of the video to taste uh, our soup. Oh my gosh, smells so good. <laughs> I'm sure it will be delicious. But I have to tell you, the best borscht usually on second or even third day. Oh yes, look how thick. And I like to serve with dollop of salad cream or cream fresh, whatever you prefer. I have salad cream today. 
and of course Dale. <laughs> Yes. In Ukraine, we serve borscht with rye bread or pampushki, traditional bread buns, which serve with borscht or any other soup. It's so delicious. You have to, you have to taste. You have to have together. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Taste of home, so good, so delicious. And I love the bread. This garlic flavor and dill is so good. It's nice complement to this borscht. This borscht, so hearty. You can eat any time of the year, it's delicious. I hope you enjoy this video. And my next video will make this Pampushki, this bread bun, so I can show how I made, so you can serve together as a meal. Um, also, as always, <laughs> the recipe in description below, and also similar Ukraine recipes. And bye, see you next time. <laughs>